Hey everyone and welcome back. My name is Daniel Caproni and this is Probability and Statistics. Today we're going to be talking about the two types of observational studies, retrospective and prospective. Now, it's not going to take us super long to get through the two, but there is a very important difference between these two studies, and I want to make sure you know exactly what that is. The first thing we should look at is making sure we know what the heck an observational study is. So an observational study is a type of study where you're not actually changing anything yourself as the person doing the study. So for example, in an experiment, we apply a treatment or do something that changes the person's life in some way, shape, or form, and we're able to come Pair results afterwards. Observational studies aren't like that. You're literally just observing something happening. So that may be something more along the lines of like watching how children solve this particular puzzle or counting the number of cars that come in of a specific color or standing on the side of the street and seeing how many people are wearing a seatbelt as they're driving past. You're not changing anything about them. You're just essentially collecting data by observing what's going on. After reviewing observational studies, let's dive into the two types, retrospective versus prospective observational studies. Now, what's the difference between the two? Well, we're going to go ahead and use a specific example to kind of help us understand the definitions of the two different types of studies. That example was students taking music class. So there was a study that came out that said, hey, students that take a music class throughout their schooling career are more likely to get higher grades. They just do better overall. Now, in order to prove that this was the case, someone went in and found all the records of students that have taken a music class throughout high school and looked at their transcripts from what the grades ended up being. Now, it's very important that what makes this a retrospective study is the fact that they did it after the matter of fact, all right? So they didn't know that they were going to be doing this study. They went ahead and said, hey, I want to see how the music kids did. And then they went digging through files to see how kids that were in music class performed with their grades in the previous years. So there was no pre-planning for this. It was a, hey, we want to do a study. Let's find the information we need to see if we can make any observations about what's going on. Now, this is very different from a prospective study because in a prospective study, you would actually choose your participants first. Now, this does not mean you're forcing them to take a music class. This just means before you're observing their grades or anything, you go ahead and go into a school and you say, hey, for the next three years, I'm going to track your students that choose to take a music class and see how they do in terms of grades. Notice it's still an observational study. I'm not forcing music classes upon them. I'm not comparing them with other kids. I am simply looking at the kids that I have chosen to be part of the study, and I'm just watching to see, hey, did they choose to take music? If they did choose to take music, what were their grades afterwards? And see if they're higher than whatever the average would be for the school. So that makes this a prospective study because they chose the participants before they actually went through whatever they were observing. So retrospective is when you go back and look at files of previous things that have happened. And prospective is when you actually choose the study first and then let it unfold in front of your eyes. One thing to keep in mind here is that in an observational study, you can't actually prove anything. So whether or not it's retrospective or prospective, these are all just observations you can make. Now, you can state your observations. You can say things that you believe to be true from that. But observational studies don't actually prove anything. You just simply don't have the control needed in an observational study to be concrete with any decision. That's where experiments and things like that come into hand because those you're actually causing a situation that you are in complete control of or as complete control as possible. Whereas an observational study, that's just not there. So be very careful in an observational study, retrospective or prospective, never come forward and say that you have proven anything because we just don't have that power from an observational study. Well, guys, that's going to wrap up our conversation for the difference between these two. 
I hope you found this helpful. If you did, go ahead and hit the like button below. And remember, you can subscribe to my channel to keep getting every week. Or maybe you just want to bookmark it so that you can easily find other videos when you need them. Again, my name's Daniel Caproni, and this has been Probability and Statistics.